Welcome to Executives at the Edge, a podcast brought to you by MEF. I'm your host, Pascal Venezes. Join me as we explore thought-provoking perspectives from the leaders and change makers who are propelling enterprise digital transformation forward. Well, today I'm so excited to have Debika Bhattacharya, Chief Product Officer at Verizon. I know I've been working with Debika for quite a little bit now at the board, and I can say, wow, what an inspiration you are, Debika. And I really look forward to this discussion. So for our audience, could you give us a little bit of background about yourself? Great. Thank you, Pascal. Really happy to be here and really happy to be part of the MEF board. Um, So my name is Debika Bharacharya. I'm the Chief Product Officer for Verizon Business. Uh, Verizon Business is a $32 billion segment of Verizon Communications. And uh, we provide uh, products for our different B2B segments. We've got large enterprise, public sector, medium business, small and medium business, um, wholesale. So it's really a variety of products, both wireless and wireline that we help our customers with. Uh, So, uh, you know, exciting job. Um, I've been with Verizon most of my career and it's just been a a fantastic journey. Yeah, and you know, Verizon is such a big name and you take on so much. It's really incredible what you you deliver on for you and your team. It's it's just uh, incredible. Where do you see the wired and the wireless? Is it all coming together now? Is that where you see it? It is, it, and it's very interesting because uh, with our rollout of 5G, uh, we've got to the point where the economics of wireless and wireline are starting to be similar. So one of our most successful products have, has been what we call fixed wireless access, which is replacing wired connections with wireless. Now, we've done that with backup for many years, but now we're starting to see it even with primary because we get seeing the resilience and um, all the capabilities that enterprise customers expect from their wired WAN connections on the wireless side. So our customers now are starting to look at just the best technology for them. It could be wireless or wireline. So we're starting to bridge across both those areas. That is so incredible to see wireless technology evolve so much. You know, how does MEF mission um, provides this better automation fit with Verizon's outlook on the enterprise technology industry? Yeah, I think it fits perfectly because as we've seen over the past few years, and especially with COVID, digitization has been accelerated across all B2B segments. Um, it's digitization of operations as well as digitization of the experience. So as we build our products and as we connect to the ecosystem of other service providers and our customers, the expectation is that these connections would be digital because it leads to a number of benefits. One is there's cost benefits. The other is reduction of errors. Um, and, and third, very importantly, our, both our partners and our customers expect to interface with service providers like Verizon digitally, which means they want to be able to use APIs to exchange information, to share um, to share incidents, to place orders. So all of that is becoming completely digital. And so the work that uh, MEF is doing around automation on the service provider to service provider side, as well as the service provider to customer side is critical to us and our customers. So do you actually see you don't ever think about portals as the interface, but you're seeing enterprise really want APIs now? They do. Uh, portals are, are great. And uh, for some customers, you know, that is the right direction. But then what we're also starting to see, especially with some of our more sophisticated customers who do have their own, um, their own services, whether they're using ServiceNow or you know, some of their own um, management tools, they want to have system-to-system Connections. Yeah, makes sense. So that's where the APIs come in, and you you know they re, you really they don't want the additional step of somebody going into a portal and entering a ticket. They want the tickets to be transmitted through APIs, and it's, you know, so so that part of it is critical, and that's how we we scale and are able to provide the the types of services we want in in the in the shortest time and reduce the intervals around incidents and being able to manage uh, new orders, changes, et cetera. 
But even these new applications and these um, developers, they they really want APIs, right? They have to call on APIs. Applications don't want to go into a portal, <laughs> they, they, so they need APIs to be able to do their thing. So, so this is the new world facing the enterprise. Absolutely, and and if we if we think about it one step further, when we look at the newer services like five G and the ability to provide. Um, network slicing and differentiated services across wireless. We would expect APIs to be application APIs to determine what kind of service we need. So uh, I think there's there's nowhere to go but continue to go up in the API space. A lot oh, of exciting cool. that, development in this area. That's incredible. You know, I was always thinking through why do you need APIs in the enterprise, and you just nailed it. So, um, so let's take it further. There's you know. What are some examples of where there is a need for standardization and why that you know that you think is really critical? I, I, I let's talk about like SD WAN, SASE. Everybody's so confused. It's cybersecurity is such a top of mind of everybody. How do I secure myself? Do you have any thoughts? Yeah, yeah. So the work that uh, MEF is doing around standard definitions um, is very critical. Um, it's, it started with carrier Ethernet, and that just led to a massive boom in the carrier Ethernet space. And um, SD-WAN has been around for a while, so it's somewhat mature, but there's still no consistent definition across the industry for what all the SD-WAN attributes should be. Um, and what I, what I like about what MEF is doing is whether it's SASE or SD-WAN, by defining a common lexicon and a common set of uh, characteristics. What that allows customers to do is to have a, an understanding across the board of what different um, uh, service providers can provide, what, ma what hardware manufacturers can provide. So it helps customers to have uh, a common understanding of services. Now, this doesn't mean that everybody will be providing the exact same set of services. Service providers as well as hardware manufacturers can differentiate, but it creates a baseline of services that all our customers can benefit from. And I think the, the reason I'm very supportive of this, what it does is it expands the industry, similar to what happened with Carrier Ethernet. So it expands the pie and everybody wins. You know, I'm a firm believer in this. Like the, the you want to you want to raise the tide to all the boats. Left, exactly right? right. But it's funny because you talk to the vendors and you talk to the providers, and sometimes they feel that they want to go at it with their own proprietariness because they feels that it, it differentiates himself. I, I I agree with you. I think there's a baseline and then there's differentiation on top. But you just see some vendors that feel like if I just don't participate and just go at it alone with my own secret sauce. I'm going to own the market. Is that kind of old thinking? I think so, uh, because you could be successful with a proprietary solution. And I think as we've seen in in the tech space and others, you can you can capture a certain portion of the market, but if you're looking for a very broad based um, you know customer impact, having standardization definitely helps create that broad base and then differentiate on top of it. So that's so the approach that we like to take is uh, is ensure that customers understand the service, everybody has the same understanding, there's no confusion about what you, what the baseline services are that one expects to get. And then Verizon, you know, with our managed services, with our other capabilities, our, our integration with different partners, our wireless, wireline capabilities, all of that will help us differentiate. So I think it's a win for customers because now there's no confusion in the market about what they thought they were buying versus what they are actually getting. Yeah, and actually what happens is if it, there's confusion, the market stalls. It doesn't Correct. grow as fast, and Correct. that's what people don't realize. Yeah. And it took me a while when I first started in the industry to realize, like, why should I pull together with the standardization, like I was doing carry Ethernet. I'm not, yeah, carry Ethernet. Um, Actually, it was Gigabit Ethernet in 1998, and there was a standard forum for that. I was like, why does you want to now? And then it occurred to me, you grow the market faster. That's right. So, so let's go back to the top here. Um, the interaction between service providers and the ecosystems, and also the customers, um, and to to the end users simultaneously. What what do you see that? What do you see that going? Yeah. So, I think this is where the automation plays into a great degree. 
Um, if we look at our customers and we take a step back, what are our, what are they looking for to help grow their business? There are a few different market trends that we're seeing. One is they want to be mobile. You know, it's hybrid. We have distributed endpoints. How can we help them with that? You know, whether it's work from anywhere, all of that, distributed endpoints. The other area is our customers want to consume network services in the way they've been consuming cloud services, which means it should be consumption-based, it should be reliable, it should be secure, but um, they don't want to commit to technology. So that's another area. Third area is uh, what we call differentiated managed services. We talked about APIs being able to digitally transact and interface uh, with our customers. So that's what we're seeing happening in the market, and um, I'm really happy that MEF is tackling some of these bigger problems around making it easier for customers to digitally interface with their partners, um, with their their own customers, and then also being able to provide a service that is well-defined, is standards-based, and allows our customers to be fully, um, fully comfortable about what they are getting from a connectivity and a security service from their from their providers. But I also think there's the bundling aspects, right? They come to you as a one-stop shop. Correct. They uh, maybe maybe some multinationals don't like it, but the majority, I think, enterprises like the idea that they can come to you and say, "Hey, I trust you. You've been my supplier forever or my provider. I want you to take care of my underlays all over the world." I want you to do my SD WAN all over the world. I want you to do my cybersecurity all over the world. And you know, I want to get to all these cloud destinations. Is that something that you're seeing this kind of bundling effect gives tremendous value to you? It does. It does. And obviously there's the economics of bundling versus best of breed in a certain geography or a certain technology. And I think some of that um you know, some of that will play out based on on service provider capabilities uh, in different technologies and different geographies. But what we are hearing from our customers is make it easy for us. And you make it easy by by exposing less of the complexity, you know, take taking into like for Verizon taking on mo- where the complexity is exactly. which is you know providing the bundle that deals with cybersecurity deals with network deals with um, the underlay associated with it and as much as we can they tell us I want you to be able to take care of all of it so I can focus on the areas that are critical to my business I don't want to focus as much on what are the strengths of a service provider like Verizon but focus on their core competencies. Uh, so yeah, so bundling is is uh, is very interesting to many of our customers as long as the economics and the capabilities um, work out um, in the different parts of the world. So what do you think about you know scale? Like where it comes next? What what does that look like? So Verizon, we as a you know given our size overall, we are a hundred and thirty billion dollar company. So we. We operate at scale, and that is something we take pride in. Um, we operate, as I mentioned earlier, across the different business segments, and we actually get most most of the benefits from our infrastructure when it's reusable. For example, we've built our 5G infrastructure that to support both the consumer space as well as the business space because we want to do everything at scale. Um, our 5G network now um, covers over 200 million uh, people in the in the United States. So everything we do, we want to make sure that it's not localized to just a certain geography or certain technologies because our customers are global. Um, they their their requirements from a, a geography, a time, the number of of uh, of their own customers that they need to service range, you know, from you know, a uh, small business all the way to the largest MNC. So we want to be able to use standardization as well as automation to help us achieve that scale. Because otherwise we're not able to achieve scale in a cost-effective way if we don't use uh, automation and standardization. Got it. I also think that there's a lot of overly kind of providers that try to come over the top and you know, you got the hyperscalers trying to provide some of their stuff too. Obviously, besides SaaS, IAS, and PaaS, the network aspects. 
what's your thoughts on that? I mean, really, Verizon has tremendous heritage, a uh, lot of trust with their businesses, and, and you, I'm sure you're going globally to do that, and you, you're a really big name, as you talk to your business is massive. You have processes, people, you can scale. I mean, that's not that's not an easy thing to do for some of these over-the-top guys. And so it's easy to come and say, hey, I can dangle this thing, I can do it for you, but to really do it at scale it well, you know, quality, it's, that's really challenging, correct? It is, it is. I mean, like I mentioned the fixed wireless access, I mean, you know, when we do it at scale, you know, this year we are looking to have 500,000 new connections for fixed wireless access. So be able to, to spin up really fast is something that you have to be able to do at scale. But I will say that one of the things that we are doing in Verizon is is being part of the ecosystem. So you mentioned hyperscalers. We have partnerships with all the major hyperscalers, AWS, Microsoft Azure, Google, uh, Google Cloud, so that we partner with them and we do provide connectivity to their services. So it's to be successful in this new era at Verizon, we know we have to partner with um, the, the small startups that are writing the innovative software, hyperscalers who provide cloud services. Verizon is providing the, the network layer, the secure network layer. And for customers, they want to see it all tied together. So we're not playing in, or we're not trying to be something that we are not, but we are we we understand the importance of the ecosystem for all the different players to be part of it to be successful but we do think that given the scale we have in the US with the with our spectrum position as well as globally there's a lot of things we can do to help our customers achieve that scale well devika this has been a great conversation i really enjoyed this conversation and i'm sure our listeners have also or will um is there anything else you, we haven't discussed or you'd like to add? No, I, I just wanted to say, first of all, thank you, Pascal. It's been, uh, it was fun chatting with you. And also I wanted to thank uh, MEF uh, for the great work that we're doing. And uh, I look forward to a lot of success together. Well, thank you. And I know from my part, uh, working with you, you know, as you come, come in has been really uh, rewarding and also really enlightening the 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 ideas and the insights you bring are really, really great because sometimes you have to think out of the box, you know, and I love some of the way you think. It, it just really helps the whole board and all of us to get in the right mind to the right focus. Because at the end of the day, we're all trying to impact the industry. That's we're right. trying to make this industry great and to deliver to to your customers um, a great experience. And, and they expect that. You know, that's right. And that means, as you said, the ecosystem has to work better together. That's right. Exactly. You know, and that's really where the world is all about now. Yeah. So yeah. thank you again. And to all our listeners, I'm sure this is a really, really great episode. So Great. Thank you, Pascal.